We intercepted a communique from an Indian general saying they were fighting the Rakshasha. <laughs> Translation, zombies. The way that this project came about is uh, in, I believe it was the summer of 2006, uh, the manuscript for, as at that time, an unpublished book, World War Z by Max Brooks, um, was sent to us, and we really responded to it. We thought it was incredibly clever and did something that was potentially very new, which was to take zombies and put them inside of a completely real world scenario uh, and also have something of global scale, which felt like an amazing opportunity. And we just fell in love with the project and luckily for us, Paramount ended up winning kind of an auction for the rights. And that started a long journey of developing screenplays that ultimately progressed to the place where we could make the film. He wants a what? Deadly pathogen with a high mortality rate, but curable. Brad read a draft and it dawned on him uh, how ambitious it was. And I also think he is someone who appreciates very much living borderlessly. And this movie was a way to understand the geometry of the globe that he appreciates and lives by. And I also think he was really taken with the notion of showing what happens around the world in reaction to a single event and not being localized. It seemed fun and also challenging. Plan B sent me the book one day and uh, I didn't know anything about the book and I just started reading it and uh, thought uh, this was a, just a great read. Then I called them and said this is something I'm really interested in and I want to sit down and have a conversation with you guys about it. So we met and we spoke about it and talked about it and you know obviously the book doesn't lend itself to a filmic narrative because of the episodic nature of the book and it has all these stories within itself. It's set 10 years after the zombie war has ended, and it is a series of interviews from people in all walks of life who had completely different experiences of this war. And so you get all these tiny snippets, and it creates a collage of what this experience might have been. It is an after action report written for the United Nations uh, about what went wrong, who didn't connect the dots in terms of allowing the zombie virus to get out of control. And what made sense to me in looking at that narrative, which is basically a series of interviews done after the fact, to say, okay, for purposes of a film, what might make sense is to have a character who was that very same investigator trying to figure out what happened during the course of the movie. It's patient zero from India. That's the problem. There's so many potential sources in play that no one knows where it began. Every film is a patient zero and every virus is a patient zero. And that will tell you how it got started and I can tell you therefore how to stop it. So for me, the great challenge and the opportunity was to take this book and turn it into a detective story. If we knew where this thing started, then we'd have a chance of developing a vaccine to stop it. I think Brad is very focused on authenticity and that things feel believable and real and logical. And I also think Mark Forster comes from naturalistic filmmaking, you know, whether it's Monster's Ball or Finding Neverland or his Bond film. So I think he likes to be in reality. I think that's where he also feels very comfortable. So I'd like to think that, you know, the combination of elements, you know, makes the film feel like it's really happening. I think that the great thing is about Max Brooks' book. He set the book in this very real frame and that sort of framework of reality. And that what really interested me because I was thinking I wanted to create a movie that feels very real. And if you're in a world and feel like this could happen right now, this minute, to any one of us. And you know, a lot of people are living constantly in this fear at this day and age that the world can change any given moment. And, you know, we have seen it change, like, you know, the best example in recent history is obviously 9-11, how, how everything changed from one moment to the next. My guys will get you, and you assist the doctor pursuing leads, my guys will get you out. I can't leave my family. 
the film focuses on Jerry Lane, who is a UN investigator, and you understand that he used to work in these places where you know crises exist, but now he sort of retreated more to focus on his family and live a more normal life. Well, the notion was, what does it feel like if you're in the middle of kind of your everyday goings on, and all of a sudden, an enormous thing erupts? Suddenly, when the cop cuts the mirror off, it's sort of the first beat of tension, and then really everything starts to derail. Remain with your because the film for me is not just a zombie movie. It's sort of a global epidemic, a global apocalypse. And that's what the book does as well. And that's why, you know, the title sort of mirrors this global spread that it's not just really about zombies. You fought in these yet? Yeah. Where? Philly, Newark. What about Houston, Lewis? Baltimore. Atlanta. Guys, I'll be honest with you. I don't know of any place back home that's doing very well. To work with Brad is incredible because he's the, the star of the film and he's also the producer. And he's a true artist and he's a, someone who has an impeccable taste and you can see the through his filmography, the projects he chose as an actor and the work he has done. And he's such a sublime and interesting actor and both of us have never done anything like this. We both had to rise to the occasion and work through this genre which we both weren't familiar with but still create something fresh and new. Get baby doll. Daddy's gotta go to work. The family is so important because ultimately one of the most important decisions in the film is if he either stays with his family and protects them or he basically tries to save the world. If I go, you, the girls, tell me I have a place to stay. If I don't, back in Philly tonight. It was very important to choose as his wife someone who has a strength, but at the same time has a vulnerability. And I think Mireille Enos has all these qualities, and you know, most people are familiar with her on sort the of TV uh, show The Killing. And she came in and did a reading, and I thought her reading was so beautiful because it was so truthful, but at the same time there was a strength and this vulnerability, and she had all the different layers I just uh, saw in that character. Yeah, everything's okay. I'm okay. That's the spirit. I come from a cinema which is character driven. So that's, that's the cinema I, I, I started with. The stories I started telling were always character driven movies and that's what I connect with and what is the character's journey and, and how do I connect with that character emotionally. And once I have that, you know, you can go as big as you want because you always remain with that. You have to begin with the character and then you can explore any world you want.